Warning, if the profanity is the part of the show that offends you, that's pretty fucked up. This week's episode of The Scathing Atheist is brought to you by Honey and by My Body Weight in Weed. My Body Weight in Weed, because airports. And now, The Scathing Atheist. Hi, this is Mo. I'm about to graduate magna coming loudly from the University of Illinois at Chicago, and you only have to take a look at the consistency of the fossil record <laughs> and the GOP to see that we did, in fact, evolve from putrid primate people. It's July 7th. And we're in the same room again. You, well, not right now. But okay, no. when you're hearing this, presumably we might be in the same room. Might be, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm No Illusions. I'm Eli Bosnick. He's done right. And from Jared Kushner's New Jersey, Ann Arbor, Michigan, and Waycross, Georgia, this is The Skating Atheist. On this week's episode, we'll catch up on all the bad news we didn't get to tell you about last week. We'll say hi to Sisyphus on the way back down the hill before next week. And David Icke will insanity at us some more. But first, the diatribe. Good news, guys. Looks like we were worried about the theocratic takeover of the Supreme Court a little prematurely, because as it happens, we can solve that whole problem with one simple trick. Turns out all we have to do is get some Muslim teachers, Wiccan teachers, and Satanic teachers to lead kids in prayer, too. And then the theocrats will see the error of their ways and quickly seek to restore the balance of church-state separation. Trust me, I read it on a meme. So for those of you who are better able to control their social media addiction than myself, I should clarify, there are a number of viral posts that are making their rounds on Facebook, Twitter, et cetera, that make some form of that point, right? Like they'll say something along the lines of all the Christians are celebrating now that the SCOTUS made it legal for teachers and coaches to lead students in prayer, but just wait until the teacher is leading them in prayers to Osmodius, the demon of lust or whatever. Right. The, the implication is that somehow the issue will be mitigated by reminding Christians that turnabout is fair play. And look, I'm not asking that memes capture the nuance of an issue. For the sake of humor, one must often generalize, exaggerate, or otherwise oversimplify. But when you present or share this argument, you're doing a lot more than that. You're actually confusing the issue, and for a number of reasons. See, it, it turns out the whole turnabout is fair play thing doesn't work when you're talking about minority rights. You follow that road long enough, it leads you to the doctrine of separate but equal. The whole point is that the power dynamic only works one way. Like one of the viral posts imagines a world where the coach at the heart of this case was named Ahmed Abdallah instead of Joe Kennedy and asks, you know, how the justices might have ruled in that case. But that hypothetical relies on the theocrats bullshit narrative about this case to begin with. Right. Because nobody gives a flying fuck if Joe Kennedy kneels down and prays at the end of a football game. Or or in the middle of one. Shit, Tim Tebow did that all the fucking time. You see it constantly when players score touchdowns or get big plays or get injured or whatever. But what Coach Kennedy did was lead his students in prayer. He went to the team and he said, I, the guy who will be deciding how much playing time you get and what position you play, would like you to know that if any of you would want to join me in professing their love for Jesus Christ, I'll be right over here. And then he gathered players from the other team and he announced this shit before the game started so he could invite parents and and spectators to join him on the field after the game. The end result, or at least the problematic aspect of it, is the exclusion of all the non-Christians. These mass exhibitions of Christianity serve to isolate players and students of minority faiths or no faith. They're displays of social dominance that undermine the sense of belonging that students deserve, even if they're Muslim, Jewish, Hindu, atheist, whatever. And they put a none too subtle pressure on students who are on the fence about religion, which one of those potential religions comes with the most social benefits. None of this would be an option for Coach Abdallah. Right. If a Muslim coach asked his students who would like to join him in Muslim prayers in the middle of the field, few, if any, students or spectators would join him. And if they did, they'd be the ones come away feeling more isolated because of it. Right. Without the majority behind you, the display would be worse than impotent. 
But that might not even be the most egregious misconception undergirding that meme, because to play along with the idea that this ruling would allow an equal right for Muslims or Hindus or Asmodians to lead their students in prayer, you have to ignore the obfuscation that the decision was built on to begin with. Right. The Supreme Court never ruled that it was OK for faculty to lead students in prayer. They ruled that no such thing ever happened. Right. Despite the pictorial evidence that Sonia Sotomayor included in the fucking dissent. Basically, they ruled that Ingrid Bergman was imagining those gaslights dimming and brightening the whole time. They presented the case as though Kennedy got fired for kneeling in a private prayer after the game and entirely ignoring the fact that nobody was taking issue with that part. And that's so much worse than simply ruling that there's nothing wrong with teachers leading their students in prayer. Not that that's not bad. This is just way fucking worse because as the meme suggests, such a rule would apply across the board. And while that might not arm everyone in the fight equally, it would at least arm everyone. I mean, look, it's hard to imagine a Muslim teacher in the U.S. risking their job and inviting even greater discrimination and demonization of their religion just to prove this rhetorical point, even if it could have had a similar effect, which it can't. But Christians are far from the united in their core beliefs, right? If, if the ruling explicitly allowed for teacher-led prayers, it probably wouldn't take too long for the whole Catholic Protestant thing or the works faith thing or the young earth, old earth shit to bubble up to the surface and prompt a review. But what they actually said is if you're sufficiently inoffensive to the majority, we will pretend it never fucking happened. The deception at the heart of the case effectively circumvents all of that shit and insulates the violation against any kind of theocratic jujitsu we might come up with. And I get that most of the people sharing these memes are doing so with the best intentions. I get that they're not really suggesting that Coach Abdallah go out there and lead his players in a Muslim prayer. But even pretending like they could for the purposes of the joke undercuts the seriousness of this issue. It pretends that there's still some kind of innate sense of basic equality at work with this court. It pretends that their justifications lead to their conclusions instead of the other way around. It pretends that the minority rights were collateral damage rather than the target. And it pretends that we can win this fight by appealing to the concept of fair play. The longer it takes to jettison those misconceptions, the longer it'll be before we can start fighting back. They're talking about your Jesus. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you a special news bulletin. Joining me for headlines tonight is nobody, because we're all hanging out together in New Jersey, getting ready for our annual Patreon-only pajama party live stream, so we're not actually recording an episode, but luckily, so much fucked up shit happened last week that we had plenty of extra headlines to record then. So we've got some gently used but never before heard headlines for you, which will join in progress after this word from our sponsor this week, Honey. All right, you guys ready to record the ad for Honey? Yes, Great. Uh, but Heath, mm -hmm. there's something we thought you should know before we record the ad. Oh, yeah? What's that? Well, this ad is actually a get-ahead for when we're in New Jersey for the pajama party week. Oh, uh, okay. So the people who are hearing this now... Are, are in the in future, yep. yes. Yep. Yes. And we know you've had a hard time with that in the <laughs> past. <laughs> no, no, no. I get it. I get it. I, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. I just won't say the exact date. Exactly. Right? Just don't don't say the date. Got it. Don't say Total, the date. Yep. No, it's, <laughs> it's no problem. Okay, great. Here we go. Uh, today's episode is sponsored by PayPal Honey. Thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. And you know what else is in the past days and times from when you're listening is... Dude, I, no, I, it, I'm good. I'm good. Go ahead, go ahead. Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it can find to your cart. It supports over 30,000 stores online ranging from tech and gaming products to popular fashion brands and even food delivery. Imagine you're shopping on one of your favorite sites. When you check out, the Honey button drops down and all you have to do is click Apply Coupons. Wait a few seconds as Honey searches for coupons it can find for that site. If Honey finds a working coupon, you watch the prices drop. It's true. I use Honey to shop for gadgets and to get money off when I order delivery. And I do it all in a time dimension that we share, all of us together right now. You don't have to say that, man. You, just, you, you could use it to buy rocket boots because you're in the future. Because that, yeah, that's what that's They're where you one are. week in the future. You know, there. Rocket Boots could be here next week, Eli. Plus, you can add Honey to your iPhone, too. Just enable it on Safari, and you can find savings on the go. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out. It's literally free, and it stalls in a few seconds. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this podcast. I'd never recommend something I don't use. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash scathing. That's joinhoney.com slash scathing. All right. Heath. I gotta June say, 29th. No, no, 
It's June 29th is the day. So close. I can cut that bit. Yeah. June 29th. And that one. <laughs> and in GI disorders news tonight, the FBI raided three branches of a Georgia-based church called the House of Prayer Christian Church, or HOPCC. And while the FBI hasn't yet commented on the purposes of the raid, early speculation ties the raid to the fact that the HOPCC is a demonic fucking cult that specifically targets veterans so they can fraudulently bilk the government of GI Bill funds. Allegedly. I mean, allegedly. like one way okay. or the other, they're using taxpayer <laughs> funds to pay for a seminary school tuition. And that seems like fraudulently bilking the government of GI Bill funds, even if you're not lying about the qualifications of your teachers and does sound like lying that. about when and where classes are being taught and charging veterans a higher tuition rate and telling VA inspectors what? that students were in class when they were actually doing unpaid chores for the church. Well, actually, chores that they paid to do because they were paid tuition. Fuck. Which the HOPCC was doing. A allegedly. Allegedly, right. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and take a gamble on this one and say definitely guilty, not allegedly. Like, I, I know the FBI, they're full of radical atheists who just love to raid churches <laughs> on a whim here in America. They hate Christianity. Right. But this feels like a strong bet. Like, it's not liable if I'm right. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I'm right. And, and don't worry, Heath, if they're found innocent and they sue us, I will dress up as Lieutenant Dan for the trial. So we'll make it fun. It's either way. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not going to be fun. So, yeah, this cult is actually based out of Hinesville, Georgia, which is about an hour down the road from me. It's so close, in fact, that I occasionally see the do you need help escaping HOPCC banners that their former victims <sighs> place. Uh, and let's be clear, because like some atheists just call all religious assemblies cults and and. I feel like there's some justification for that. It's a matter of degree, not kind. But I reserve that term for the thing that the rest of the world means when they say cult. You know, the, the level of religion where ex-members feel the need to start hotlines to help people escape. And by that definition, HOPCC is a very much a cult. There's a website, in fact, where former members share pretty damning testimony about their treatment by the church's leadership. And kudos to them for picking a stupid fucking enemy. That website is HOPCC.com. Oh, <laughs> and the website for the cult is HOPCConfire.com. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So they know about dot com. They do. <laughs> they just didn't get yeah. their own dot com. Hey, Dave, when you were buying it, you made sure that our thing didn't read like con fire. Just yeah, right well, there. it doesn't have the word what? con right in it, does it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, honestly, if nothing else has given you hope over the last few years, we are much better at buying domain names than yeah. the bad guys. <laughs> right. Sounds like an IPA brand that has a church or something. <laughs> right. Anyway, so a, a couple of years ago, a veterans advocacy group called Veterans Education Success sent a letter to the VA asking them to take a look at some deceptive and possibly fraudulent activities of the group. A group which, by the way, took in almost three quarters of a million dollars in GI Bill funding in 2018 alone. And in an almost certainly related follow up, the FBI raided three of their affiliated churches early Thursday morning, two in Georgia and one in Texas. The raids started almost concurrently, so clearly they were trying to keep Church One from tipping off Church Two, et cetera. And it's worth noting that all three churches were located really fucking close to military bases. Huh. And that is not an accident. Mm -mm. Anyway, I'm sure we'll have more on this story in the near future. And in Paxton Hicks news. Fantastic. If you thought the concurring opinion in Dobbs from Clarence Thomas that mentioned revisiting the idea of sodomy laws was just some blustery posturing about horrible bigot stuff that's not actually going to happen, you are obviously not Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton. Nope. He has always been in favor of making gay sex illegal, very literally, his whole career. He actively supported sending people to jail for having consensual sex if it wasn't properly heterosex, like he learned in fucking church. And Paxton was recently asked about challenging the Supreme Court ruling in Lawrence v. Texas again. That's the ruling that struck down the existing sodomy law in Texas at that time. That time was 2003, by the way. Yeah. 2003, until then, they had a sodomy law in Texas on the books. <sighs> and in response to that question about challenging Lawrence, Paxton said, yes, mm -hmm. he would defend another state sodomy ban 
that would lead to a Supreme Court review of the Lawrence case. Okay, so I'm not endorsing his point of view, but you can see how the concept of an asshole being penetrated might be kind of threatening if you yourself are an asshole. Sure. So, that was motivation. Yeah, especially if he's been reading my emails. (laughs) Okay, so here's the exchange we got between a reporter and Ken Paxton. This is so fucking insane. The initial question was, would you, as Attorney General, be comfortable defending a law that once again outlawed sodomy? In response... Paxton, he he started with some bullshit preamble, like hoping to sound vague. Great question. uh, Shit like (laughs) that. Think about questions like that. (laughs) Then he said, quote, the Supreme Court has stepped into issues that I don't think there was any constitutional provision dealing with. They were legislative issues. And this is one of those issues. And there may be more. What? (laughs) And then the reporter was like, hey, man, you never really stopped doing that bullshit vague preamble thing. That was all bullshit vague preamble. Let's try again. And okay, this is the exact words from the reporter. Quote, just for the sake of time here, if the state passed the exact same law that Lawrence overturned on sodomy, you wouldn't have any problem then defending that and taking that case back to the Supreme Court. And Paxton said, yeah, my job is to defend the state law and I'll continue doing that. Yeah, okay. Look, there's one right answer to what kind of sex are you willing to let other consenting adults have with one another, and that's not it. Nope, Nope, that is very much not it. There's only one answer to that. No, it's because of his loyalty to the law. He's he's like he's like Judge Dredd, except he should get his dick blown off. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, that exchange ended with the reporter clarifying one final time, asking, okay, would you support the Texas legislature in reenacting a sodomy ban and bringing back that test to the Supreme Court? And that's when Paxton tried to be vague again. And he said, I don't know. I'd have to look at it. I don't know. But just to be that's wrong and horrible. Or, but just to be clear, there's no mystery. He knows he doesn't have to look at shit. Paxton was literally one of the people who signed an amicus brief in 2003 asking the court to uphold the Texas sodomy ban in the Lawrence case. That brief made the argument that the state has a rational basis for a sodomy ban because sodomy bans are necessary for, quote, public health and to, quote, discourage sexual activity outside of marriage. That amicus brief also mentioned that the state law was, quote, One part of a larger network of laws designed to further the legitimate state interest of promoting traditional marriage of one man and one woman, end quote. Okay, okay. so wait, the argument is without the homophobic laws, how would we prop up our homophobic views? Yep, exactly. (laughs) I mean, it's not great, but at least it's consistent. Sure. And I'm just I'm just baffled that the dude was like, oh, do I believe what I've written on the record as having believed? (laughs) Maybe <laughs> society is good. This is working out great where I get to do this. This yeah. is going to we just, smoke bomb. It's all working You're just out. standing there in a smoke cloud now that you made. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So at this point, you might be thinking, all right, but what if Ken Paxton modified his position over the last 19 years and he got woke? That is not what I was thinking. Yeah. That well, <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. Anybody who was stop thinking that. Of course not. A fucking course not. <laughs> I'll just give you a few examples. In 2015, He wrote an opinion telling local officials in Texas that they could do the same thing as Kim Davis and refuse to provide marriage licenses to same-sex couples. In 2019, he tried to defend Chick-fil-A, claiming they were the victim of religious discrimination. He thought Chick-fil-A was victimized by religious discrimination. And he's the guy who wrote a legal opinion earlier this year that said parents who allow their trans kids to get gender-affirming care are guilty of child abuse. And Christian bigots like Ken Paxton are in high-level positions in states all over the country. It's not just him. So that's why we need federal laws that say things like, I don't know, all consensual adult sex is fucking legal, obviously. Nobody cares what it says on parchment from 1789. Or, yeah, or from between 70 and 90 CE, right. Yep. None of that. Yeah, so, okay, normally at this point, I'd close out by saying something like, Fuck your face, Ken Paxton. Fuck your face, Ken Paxton. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But he looks like somebody who always just recently got his face fucked on one side. Somebody fucked his face on just the one side. <laughs> so good job. Whoever keeps doing that. That's awesome. Keep. 
doing the one side. I feel like that. Don't even it out. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Tilt him all the way. And in, oh my God, I can't believe it's even more bad news news. <laughs> what with the United States traveling back into whenever the fuck your grandpa thinks America was great again, you might have missed a shocking and heartbreaking piece of terrorism out of Norway this week, where a radical Islamist shot and killed two people outside a gay bar and injured 10 others. Eli left space for a joke here in the notes. He oh, you have, good. You have a, maybe a pun? Perhaps. Uh, yeah. Uh, Islamist. More like Islam. Yeah. Pass. No. No. Nope. Okay. Yeah. That's fair. Just yeah, tell no. the story. Oh, sure. Now, I should point out that Norwegian police are still determining the motive of the gunman. Maybe a 42 year old guy from Iran who was known to Norwegian police security services since 2015 shot at people outside of Oslo's biggest gay club because he hates door charges. We don't want to rush into any conclusions. <laughs> okay, that guy with the clipboard is a liar every time. It doesn't even say anything on the paper. You right. know it's just blank paper and he's at <laughs> right. the front. He's, he's got a clipboard for no reason. Now, but to be fair to the Norwegian police security services, though, not everybody keeps their mass shooting aftermath checklist as dusted off as America's. So. Yeah. yeah, that's fair. <laughs> so whatever the reason the suspect opened fire at the line outside of the club just after 1 a.m. And as a result, Norway had to cut short their annual 10-day Pride Festival out of concern for safety, including what was supposed to be their first Pride Parade since 2019. And all of that is now gone because some religious asshole couldn't talk to his invisible friend about how much he wants to fuck dudes or whatever. Right, and, and because all the other religious assholes played along with the delusion that got him there. Yeah, and look, I point this story out for a couple of reasons. The first is, we have a couple of listeners in Norway who wrote to us and said, like, hey, this is not getting any attention. I know it's for obvious reasons, but it's religious and it sucks. But it's also a pretty terrifying reminder that we all need right now that nowhere is safe from religious extremism. OK, not the bluest of states or one of the most secular and progressive countries in the world. Right. Hate does not know borders and Christianity by no means has a monopoly. And in libel thumper news tonight, <laughs> in a week set to be historically associated with terrifying news coming out of the nation's highest court, there's one nugget of terror that may have easily slipped by you. And that came in the form of Clarence Thomas's unhinged rant in defense of a homophobic church that was suing the SPLC for pointing out they were a hate group. The rant came in the form of the lone dissent to the court's refusal to take up a case challenging the 1964 New York Times versus Sullivan ruling. This is the landmark case that protects media companies by setting a standard of actual malice in cases of libel brought against them. And it's basically the ruling that makes the scathing atheist a thing that can exist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, of course, its removal would be a significant step towards the return of blasphemy laws. And just for a little extra context, Clarence Thomas, the only black member of the Supreme Court, wants to overturn a landmark ruling in favor of the New York Times after they published an ad made by supporters of Martin Luther King Jr. Yep. Instead, Clarence Thomas thinks the ruling should have gone in favor of L.B. Sullivan, the police commissioner of Montgomery, Alabama in 1960, who tried to sue the Times because that ad got a few irrelevant details wrong, like which protest songs were being sung at the thing. Jesus. Clarence, Clarence, Neil Gorsuch doesn't actually know a witch who can turn you into a white guy, man. Oh, God. He's messing with you. <laughs> He's messing with you, Clarence. So I, I should probably point out that there's actually been a lot of speculation that this ruling was in as much danger as Roe. Both Thomas and Gorsuch have signaled a desire to revisit it in the past, but it looks like it's going to live to fight another day at this point, despite a hard push from Coral Ridge Ministries for the legally protected right to hate gay people without consequences. <sighs> they argue that their ministry faced serious financial harm after being listed by the Southern Poverty Law Center as a hate group, and the SPLC argued that that's the fucking point. Yes. <laughs> right? Like, you're supposed to be harmed for being a hate group, and all the non-shitty people agree here, as do the other five conservative justices. You know, I've often said over the years that, like, I regret that we didn't, like, beat Thomas to creating open in arguments for like one of our shows. But I got to admit that this year I'm actually pretty glad that explaining Supreme Court decisions isn't part of my job. Yeah, in his dissent, 
Thomas bemoans the way the SPLC designation lumped Coral Ridge in with neo-Nazis and the KKK and forced them to be excluded from the Amazon Smile program. Then he goes on to say, quote, Coral Ridge maintained that although it opposes homosexual conduct based on its religious belief, it in no sense is a hate group. No. To the contrary, and this is (laughs) him quoting their unevidenced claim here, quote, has nothing but love for people who engage in homosexual conduct and, quote, has never attacked or maligned anyone on the basis of engaging in homosexual conduct and both quotes. This, by the way, despite once publishing an article in their newsletter titled Sex with Children, Homosexuals Say Yes. Oh. Their late founder, whose sermons are still broadcast on the ministry's TV channel, also promoted the work of R.J. Rushduni, who advocates the execution of LGBTQ people. Okay, Uh just to be clear, they said, yes, we oppose the existence of gay people, but we never tried to, like, lynch them or do a holocaust, so you're welcome? Like, that was their argument for them? Yes, Yes. and Clarence Thomas bought it, Mm -hmm. right? He bought it, and he was like, don't worry, everyone. I know that white supremacists stop exactly at the group they hate at this particular second. I am a black man. Uh, (laughs) So, yeah, for the time being, we're still allowed to point out that hate groups are hate groups, but who knows for how long? It's also worth noting the framing of the argument, right? Thomas went out of his way to emphasize in his dissent that Coral Ridge was just expressing their religious beliefs. And as we all know, by this court standard, the definition of religious liberty is Christians get to do whatever the fuck they want. And now they want to be able to be a hate group without consequences. So it's only a matter of time before they get it. (sighs) And next up in headlines, the pro-life majority of the Supreme Court guaranteed a whole bunch of preventable death last week. And they also had a big ruling about abortion. But we already talked about the abortion one. So now it's time for another monumental abject failure by the nation's highest court. That we'd all be yelling about constantly, honestly, if it wasn't overshadowed by the monumental abject failure in the Dobbs ruling that we already talked about. And the Kennedy one. Yeah, and the Kennedy one. Of course, this third one that I'm talking about is the case of New York State Rifle and Pistol Association v. Bruin, in which that same 6-3 conservative majority struck down a century-old law in New York State that put some very obvious common sense regulations on the ownership of handguns. In the course of two days, the court said that states do have the right to own every uterus in some sense because, you know, states' rights are important. Hold on, wait, no, they're not. Time out. I'm a legal scholar who just called fucking time out during the thing. Dip new, time, new thing after the time. States do. Have no, they don't have the right to enact basic gun control. Now, time in for the fucking first thing. I'm a legal scholar. Yeah. Yeah. Look, if your conclusion winds up as we need more concealed weapons and unwanted babies, your judicial philosophy is just wrong. Yep. Right. I, I don't need to know anything about how you got there to know at least that. Do you think any of them looked at the docket and thought to themselves, like, I don't know, guys, do we want to take away the rights of more than half the country? Right after we gave them permission to carry hidden firearms wherever they like. <laughs> like, what if, you know, one of them is brave? Right, brave is not the right word. What do we do if, if one of them's brave? Lemons. So <laughs> when you think about the gun control issue, it might not seem like it's related to religion very much. Yes, the same six Christian zealots on the Supreme Court were horribly wrong on gun control, too. But you might be tempted to write that off as just a coincidence. Don't do that. Despite nothing in the Bible about gun rights and nothing in the Bible about banning abortion, both of those things are very much part of the culture for a large group of Christians in America. White evangelical Christians in particular own more guns per person than any other religious demographic that we have. And of course, gun companies are very happy to play into that. Quick reminder... The gun company that was the brand of choice for the shooter in Uvalde posted a tweet eight days before that massacre that had the image of a toddler holding an assault rifle and a caption from Proverbs 22, 6 that says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Praying hands emoji. One more time. A child holding an assault rifle is the picture there. 
Yeah. No, after the shooting, they updated the tweet to say, and if he gets old. Uh, assuming he gets old. Shit. Can we get the Steakums guys to do this one? They got to Crisis actors. That's someone good at Steakums. They're great at this. And we also have several other major gun manufacturing companies that are steeped in Christianity, both in their management and their marketing, not just that one. That includes the company called Go Fuck Yourself. No, I'm not naming any of these gun companies, but there are a bunch. I will mention some of the dumbest commentary we've had about this topic from our politicians here in America. There's an obvious winner, and you can probably guess who that might be. But first, uh, this is important. We're going to warm it up with some uh, lesser stupidity, like stupidity yoga. We don't want to pull a fucking neuron going straight to the winner. There you go. During a committee hearing in the U.S. House earlier this month, GOP Representative Pat Fallon offered up a gunless explanation for the mass shooting using guns problem. According to Fallon, quote, there's been a noticeable breakdown of the family, an erosion of faith, and a seismic drop in social interaction in large measure due to the overuse of these dang smartphones. Oh my God. <sighs> At which point he held up his phone as a visual aid so the rest of the hearing could understand what the fuck he was talking about. Oh my God. The, the fucking kids these days and their dang smartphones defense. That might as well be the boomer mating call. <laughs> <laughs> I want someone to be like, oh, do you mean how the anonymous and unmonitored nature of the internet has allowed young men to be radicalized by the far right so that he could be like, no, no, I actually like that part. I meant Candy Crush? <laughs> right, yeah. It seems gay to me. It's not social. Yeah. Why is a sprinkle ball a good thing? <laughs> Think about it. We also got a confusing suggestion from former NFL player and current candidate for the U.S. fucking Senate, Herschel Walker. And I say confusing because it sounds like he's an early AI chatbot before it became sentient in what he says right here. He said, quote, what about getting a department that can look at young men that's looking at women that looking at social media? Question mark. He's leading in the polls over Warnock, guys. It's not by much, but he's leading in the fucking polls. Yes. Yeah. The guy who said that sentence and also said that his multiple personality disorder makes him like Jesus is leading in the polls in Georgia. Mm. <sighs> and that brings us to the winner and still reigning champion of stupid Marjorie Taylor Greene. Yep. Also one of Georgia's. <laughs> During a meeting for the House Rules Committee, she said, I think children should be trained with firearms. I think that's very important. And then she went into a rant about abortion and said, we're talking about kids being killed. Abortion kills innocent children. They can't protect themselves at all. And... That's when Democrat Jamie Raskin said, well, it sounds like you want to arm them. <laughs> okay, so so clearly a joke about arming a fetus, right? <laughs> Obviously. Mm -hmm. But in response, MTG said in full seriousness, watch the video. She's so serious. She said, that's impossible. That's impossible, Mr. Raskin. That's impossible. <laughs> Which means she's considered it before, right? She's been down that road. She's already thought about it. It's a good idea in theory, but their little arm buds couldn't pull the trigger. They don't have fingers <laughs> right. yet. Yeah, and I know what you're thinking. Arm bud triggers. My team has been working on this for months, <laughs> Mr. Raskin. <laughs> I'm an elected representative for the U.S. government. Right. What do we get, like a bump stock in there? No, no, no. Uh, Baby bump stock? Okay. So oh, yeah, I beat me to it. <laughs> Bottom you line, fast brain. If you're in a red state and you want to terminate a pregnancy, it's going to be much easier from a legal standpoint to buy a gun and have it surgically implanted into your uterus to arm <laughs> your fetus with a little bump stock and then have a gun accident. That will yeah. be easier for you legally. Ooh. Yeah. Fuck. And in gift of gab news, a police department actually managed to stop a right-wing bigot before he did a mass shooting this week. And can I just pause for a minute and say, awesome job, everybody. There's a first time for everything. Good for them. All it took was for the attempted shooter to spend weeks up to his arrest, very explicitly saying that he was going to kill gay people. Mm -hmm. And those cops swooped right 
in a couple weeks later. Cool. They nailed it. Cool. Uh, so they're probably going to raid all the churches and synagogues and mosques like in the next couple of days for doing the same thing for centuries and announcing that they're going to kill the people. <laughs> Is that what's going to happen? I, 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 honestly, you give them an excuse to raid the mosques, they might just take it. I, I like That's the <laughs> daily struggle meme of their bigotry. Right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I won't poison your ears with any of the garbage this bigot spewed out onto his Gab account for his sheepskin business. What? Yeah, side note, weird to use your business profile for your terrorism announcements, but I will point out that Hemet Mehta raised something that not a lot of the mainstream media has picked up on, namely that this dude's hate didn't just come out of nowhere. Rather, he was repeating, often word for word, the hateful instruction he was receiving in his church. Specifically, the New Independent Fundamentalist Baptist, or New IFB churches, that so often appear in our headline segment. Yeah, no, I can actually find those segments by running a search for called for the execution of gay people. <sighs> I'll do it. You sure can. Like every week. Yep. In fact, Mr. Silence of the Lambskins rhetoric sounds exactly like that of his pastor, Aaron Thompson of Sure Foundation Baptist Church in Vancouver, Washington, who said on video that teachers who teach, quote, the filth of sodomy should be, quote, shot in the back of the head, end quote. By a government official and then went on to clarify that if any Christians act on this, quote, they didn't get that idea from me, end quote, except yes, one literally did. Yep. And it was only with extreme and incredible luck that someone stepped in before sheepskin condom actually hurt someone. Yeah, absolutely. And if you want a mental picture of this guy, just Google um, recessive lumberjack and you'll get a pretty good idea, even there if he doesn't go. personally pop yep, up. Yeah, it's right there. And look. The point is, for far too long, this country has treated the pulpit like the confessional or client lawyer confidentiality. And it's not right. Hate speech is not protected speech, even when you're delivering a message from your invisible friend. Mm, it is. Well, it, it shouldn't be, at least. No. So given the Supreme Court, stay tuned for Pastor Aaron to start delivering his sermons from the 50 yard line any day now. Yeah. I think you might have just accidentally quoted Thomas's concurrence in the Kennedy decision. <laughs> yeah, I hate when I do that. And on that note, I guess we're going to close the headlines off for the night. Heath, Eli, thanks as always. Jumanji. And when we come back, David Icke will be here because once you invite him in once, you just can't get rid of him. Hey, podcast listener. I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright. And I'm No Illusions, reminding you that this Saturday night, July 9th, we'll be having our patron-only live stream from 7 to 10 p.m. We'll be answering questions, playing games, there'll be juggling, magic, and so much more. But that's not all. This year, we hired a real camera crew with lights and sound, so you'll be able to see us and hear us better than ever. Mm -hmm. It's totally free for the patrons of any of our podcasts. Plus, I'm going to see just how many Rubik's Cubes I can fit into my record. Wait, what? No, 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 I'm not. No, Eli messed with the teleprompter again. He said I was going to put Rubik's Cubes in my rectum. Once again, that's July 9th at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Fun games and Heath fitting Rubik's Cubes up his ass. Guess how many he can fit up there and you could win great prizes. No, no, you cannot. You cannot. It's just the games and the fun and stuff. Not that part. I'm going to say three. Okay, well, I can do way more than three, obviously. I thought you weren't doing it at all. I'm not. I'm not doing it. I'm just saying as a matter of pride, just obviously I could do more than three. I could. I want. But could you solve it? Both. Maybe one of them. <laughs> A lot of people don't know that guano contains powerful decomposing microbes which help control soil-borne diseases and harmful nematodes and which serve as ideal compost activators. Which is my way of counterbalancing the bad name we're going to be given to bat shit as we break down another chapter of David Icke's Everything You Need to Know But Have Never Been Told in a segment that we call Everything You Need to Know. So this is chapter seven. It's called Mind Control and Shape-Shifting Royals. And it opens on a Steinbeck <laughs> quote, right? You are one of the rare people who can separate your observations from your preconceptions. You see what is where most people see what they expect. So it, that's a quote from East of Eden. It basically boils down to, boy, you sure aren't David Icke. Right. <laughs> he might as well add, thank you, John Steinbeck. You are talking to me. Yes. Okay. But 
that's literally the sentence before the quote starts. You are talking that moment in the book. It's a Chinese guy telling a white guy how amazingly not racist the white guy is. Chinese guy says, that's why I'm talking to you. You're one of the rare people who's not a bigot. So David, I just said, that's me. I'm the best white guy. That's <laughs> definitely what he's going for there. Yeah. Yeah, so then he introduces the chapters pre him devolving into an anti cinematic ramp subject, which is mind control. Two sentences in, he's like, Oh, also the whole satanic panic was really on to something. They were really on. <laughs> Had some good points. I feel like a guy who does mushrooms to talk to the anti Semitic angels in the seventh dimension shouldn't be psyched about witch hunts. But it's a crazy <laughs> world we're living in, you know? Yeah. So he tells us about the experiences of Arizona Wilder, former abused mind controlled person. Yeah, all Arizona's story is missing is a New York Times feature about how it was Pornhub all along. <laughs> okay, don't devolve into the anti-Semitic rant yet. You got this, David. You're, she was a beautiful Aryan woman, genetically perfect. Yes. Like, that's exactly <laughs> yes. what happens here. Blonde hair, blue-eyed people are the reptilians' prefer. his words, preferred <laughs> genetic type. <laughs> I'm saying you're better at resisting mind control. It's a compliment right, that you're yeah. good at that. <laughs> I like a shiksa. What can I say? I'm a lizard. And then, since it's a chapter on mind control, obviously, within the first page, we're talking about MK Ultra. The real purposes of which, by the way, were making Hillary's victims forget what she did to them and also later ripping off the Manchurian candidate. <laughs> By the way, I finished typing that sentence and the next sentence in the book is like, I did not steal this from Manchurian Candidate. Manchurian <laughs> Candidate stole this from me. Right away. It does. It does. Stop checking IMDb for when things came out. This That's a hippo violation. You're violating <laughs> my hippo. Okay, here's the thing. Now I feel like David Icke is being mind controlled by the Jewish lizard aliens. Like if I was a Jewish lizard alien running a giant world conspiracy, the perfect cover would be this exact book. No, that's fair. Yes. Yeah, that lays it out in detail. You just tell the biggest thing. You're like, hey, you remember Cookie Guy who choked on TV? Let's <laughs> tell him all the universal truths. They'll be buried for another hundred right, years. Right, yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm a god. <clears throat> Almost died from Cookie. <laughs> well, yeah, we're getting that guy. Absolutely. But Okay, all right, all right. You jest, but... Why would famous people take pictures with butterflies if they weren't hinting around about the mind-controlled sex slaves provided to them by Project Monarch, like the butterfly? <laughs> it's weird that the mind control didn't cover no hinting around about your mind-controlled sex slaves. Because <laughs> you'd think that'd be one of the first things they'd mention, right? Is like, oh, no, don't talk about Fight Club. Yeah, well, and this is in addition to apparently the all-seeing eye, right? There's a, a figure here with the actual caption, the number of times you see celebrities covering one eye in publicity shots is ridiculously high, <laughs> dot, 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 unless, okay. period. He, tell, he tells us to Google that, and he says the one eye thing is a reference to the cult of the all-seeing eye that's behind his whole thing. But it turns out the real powerful cult, I did some more research on this, it's the cult of the all-seeing two eyes. I did I found so many shots of famous right. people no, with you're right, two actually. eyes you, you can see in the shot. I feel like David Icke is hiding something. Is what right? I'm saying. Yeah, a whole eye. Yeah, and it's just super casually. It's like, oh, also, by the way, Hitler didn't die at the end of World War II. Anyway, moving on. Yes! <laughs> yeah. Yes! Right past that. David Icke writes this book like he just sat down next to you on a bus that you are going to get off way before your stop. Yeah, right. He's very itchy. The writing, his writing is itchy. Yeah. And oh, also he claims that NASA is the anglicized version of Nazi. <laughs> okay. Which is the Germanified version of the Italian National Socialist. Whatever. Yeah. And uh, at this point, he's like, speaking of which, the Jews started all the wars. Seriously. Exact sentence. The hidden hand, the Jewish lizard aliens, covertly created both world wars by controlling all sides. Yeah. And, the, and then he's like, they inflict unspeakable horrors on children. Unspeakable. Now, let me speak about them in great detail. <laughs> Yikes. God. And there's such silly fan. And then they take the kids and they... They turn their butts inside out. Yeah, right. They make them love a puppy and then they kill the puppy. Yeah. Oh, God. So I have to put this sentence out, too. It's so, so fucking bad. He says, quote, the memories that flood in are photographic because of how trauma focuses the mind, end quote. 
What? I'm sorry. That's just that is an impressive level of wrong there. <laughs> Jesus. Cool. So that means that those photographic memories probably hold up to scrutiny when it comes to like time concurrent photographs and corroborating. Ev sorry, what's that? Oh, I'm a Satan Jew. Got it. Okay, yep. I'm a Satan Jew. Andy. <laughs> <Yep>. Okay. <laughs> and then from there, he directly steals the Winter Soldier activation code words thing, like where the the, the sentence that I and he, he explains that he once sat in with a therapist in London who was showing off the code word thing on a patient who was mind controlled, just like the Winter Soldier. One of the code words makes you have a shape shifted face. So you wouldn't want to split him up there in my mind. You wouldn't want to <laughs> David Icke saw uh, he, he's allowed to just sit in with therapists w when they have a patient. <laughs> Clearly. Don't mind the gentleman in the turquoise suit. I've yeah. kept the cookies in the waiting room. So. Sorry, it just really catches the eye. It's all <laughs> turquoise. He's choking. Okay, but but if you don't believe him, just search Bill Clinton mind control treason on YouTube and just feel the truth roll over you guys. <laughs> okay, I did that, by the way. It brings you to part 27 in a YouTube series by a different crazy person that isn't David Icke. At this point, this book's like a schizophrenic ARG. <laughs> All right. So then he tries to sell us a book by Kathy O'Brien, former blonde haired, blue eyed, mind controlled person. She was Gerald Ford's mind control sex slave via the Jesuits. Oh, via the Jesuits. OK. Yeah. Cool. Uh -huh. I, I was about to ask a question. <laughs> Go ahead. She was also satanically abused by George Bush Sr., Dick Cheney, Ronald Reagan and Hillary. <laughs> yeah. Kathy. Are you just Googling famous people to include on your list of satanic abusers in front of us? <laughs> I can see you Googling, Kathy. Hats. I like that the Clintons, it was Bill and Hillary, according to mm -hmm. those. I like that the Clintons were the first couple to fuck the Manchurian candidates as a couple. Like I, I think that's endearing, yeah, right? I, you'd right. love to see it. They seem happy together. Now, of course, the lizard shapeshifters eventually took Kathy on a trans-dimensional tour, as they are wont to do. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. They're also wont to explain all the details of their secret conspiracy like an overconfident bad guy in a movie that's yep. dipping Kathy in a slow-moving device. And then they just let her go, I guess, and they forgot to use the mind control to make her not tell David Icke the whole story. Right. Yep. Or to make David Icke tell. <laughs> well, and then we tie all of this into the British royal family, obviously. Of course, sure. Uh, we learned that even at the ripe old age of 102, the Queen Mother could still stab the shit out of a child's sacrifice. She, she never lost her form right up to the end. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm picturing that they have to give her one of those electric turkey carvers and they, they only get it out for child sacrifices now. <laughs> right, yeah. Battery's dead every time. It's been two years. And, of course, Prince Charles is also fond of turning into a reptile and devouring the flesh of babies. Yep. This is all from the account of Arizona Wilder, you mentioned before. And David I tells us to look up his interview with her. But <laughs> apparently you can't find it with Google. So he has to be like, you should Google... Oh, no. Okay. You got to go to davidike.com and use the search facility thing that I built there. And yeah. you might be able to find my and interview. Make sure you type this in exactly caps sensitive. <laughs> Apparently, to the royal family fights over who gets to suck out the baby's last breath, which could, like, conjures up some pretty gruesome gaw moments in my imagination. <laughs> Chris Rock doing a bit about who gets the big piece of children. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, this part didn't add up for me. We're supposed to believe that the royal family, they'd turn into lizards and they'd start squabbling about the good parts of the baby right in front of the sex slaves. Yeah, that's right. That's just that's gauche. <laughs> they wouldn't do that. So gauche. And of course, we learned that Vlad the Impaler, also a shape shifting lizard. He goes, Vlad the Impaler is related to Prince Charles and George Bush. One of them for realsies even. <laughs> Ah, uh, and also we learned here that the royal family doesn't die so much as bud. Yeah, I mean, look, <laughs> I love this part. That does explain the physical appearances for sure, but I'm skeptical. <laughs> I'm still skeptical. Okay, so you remember how Cartman grew a clone of a Shakey's restaurant by collecting fetuses yeah. and then doing stem cells? <laughs> yeah, obviously that's not how it works in real life. Unless, of course, you're cold-blooded like a reptile. So that's how the royals live for so long. They just smush stem cells to the old parts and then grow new clones. Of course, yeah. Yeah, obviously. 
He also says here, he's like, and I knew Jimmy Savile was a pedophile way before it was public knowledge. I get points for that one. And I'm like, dude, you've literally accused every famous person ever of being a pedophile. You're bound to hit <laughs> now and again. Right. But then I looked it up and he actually never did publicly accuse Seville. That was like that was one. I like somehow I gave David Icke too much credit in that note. <laughs> yeah. Which is actually super impressive given, as you said, that he literally accuses every famous person of being a pet. It's, imp it's an impressive miss. Yeah, honestly. Saying. It's a broken clock. It's about to be right, and then it moves right past the actual... Yeah. <laughs> it exactly <laughs> falls yeah. down or whatever gravity <laughs> drags down the minute hand. But of course, just as I was wondering if maybe I should be questioning his veracity, he points out that if he wasn't right, why would there be so many dragon statues in London if they weren't secretly lizards? <laughs> and I was like, why Why would there be if there if they were... <laughs> David Ike, what's the normal amount of dragon statues in your head? That would, <laughs> what would you have not reacted to number-wise for that? <laughs> Where's all the monkey statues? Yeah, right, exactly. Also, we learn here that apparently the reptilian demigods, they're manipulating the fabric of reality with the holograms and whatever, but they still haven't figured out how to shape-shift without getting like two feet taller than the human form. Yeah. Seems mm -hmm. like that would fuck you up real often, yeah. So, yeah, and, and then he starts talking about longevity and he's like, you know, they're secretly lizard aliens. Why else would rich people live so long so often? Obviously, it's by devouring the blood and essences of the blood young. Blood essences of the young, of it's course. Themselves. Yeah. Right. And then he like he realizes this doesn't add up. He's like, but you might be asking yourself why a hologram would age at all since I said they were holograms earlier. And the answer to that is, <laughs> right? That's so weird. <laughs> oh, also... Why would they age in a way that constantly lets us catch them turning into a lizard on YouTube? Another great question. Am I writing my book? <laughs> let go. Let go of my book. Release me. And of course, at this point, you're probably wondering, how is this the fault of the Jews? But fear not, because the book's next heading is the Rothschild connection. Oh, oh, I know the connection. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> exactly. He's, he does this whole bit about how he done seen a Rothschild once. He's like, I talked to a guy who claimed to be a Rothschild offspring once. I'm like, I bet I bet I can guess what kind of accent he used. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he called him Deep Sukkot. Oh, nice. Nice. <laughs> Other throat. So, yeah, <laughs> we learned that Rothschilds aren't born so much as made in sperm factories. Yeah. Okay. So, you know how lots of people at the top of their field are not from the Rothschild family? That's actually because they're all secretly from the Rothschild. <laughs> Family yeah, the sperm factory. That's how he explains everybody else in government. <laughs> right. Yeah, according to fucking Bubba Rothschild or whatever, <laughs> the last non-reptilian president was Dwight Eisenhower. And I just, I love how that, like, what? the one warning about the military-industrial complex has gone so far with conspiracy theorists. <laughs> He's one of them, damn it. Okay, regardless, how would you know that somebody's not a holographic lizard alien Great Jewish question. conspiracy? <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't get past the image of like Eisenhower walking the next guy around being like, oh, would you like a peanut M&M? No, you got a Capri Sun of baby blood. Okay, well, let me show you the patio. <laughs> this drawer kind of sticks if you don't hit the side of the desk. Uh, yeah. That was Kennedy, by the way. <laughs> he goes, he's, he's talking about Al Gore and he's like, yes, yeah, it dissolves baby in acid to stay younger for it or whatever. Also, perpetuates global warming, which is a fucking myth. So if you needed another reason to hate him. <laughs> Who, how does that help the lizard aliens thinking know. global warming? They're cold-blooded. Yeah, they need the they fucking want, They want to get out on a rock. But that would be like, that would mean, that would mean it was real, though. The myth <laughs> is, it's even worse now. Yep. Wait, Sorry. holograms. <laughs> it's on the temperature the that the holograms Shut up. prefer. Budding. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure at this point, too, he says that Christianity is also satanic. Yeah, he does. And <laughs> the story from fucking Bubba Rothschild, it gets so sad here. He says, all my siblings and my cousins and all the other Rothschilds, they got seated into government and academia and business and Hollywood. And I was um, praying focus guy. <laughs> yes. Focus the prayer on me. I was like a rock of prayer. And even David Icke got bored with the story at this point. So the guy immediately ramped up the line. He was like, Antichrist, I'm the Antichrist. Yeah. To be clear. It's awesome. <laughs> right. Write, write that down. Pick your pen back up. Most reliable witnesses and their testimony with an obvious psychotic break. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, and he tells us all about how Pope John Paul I was murdered for trying to expunge the Vatican's secret Freemasons. I only point this out because this is the point where he uses the word Freemasonically in his book. The adverb. Yeah. There are great moments in this book, and one of them is you could just taste the moment where David Icke was sitting in his office just going, Freemasonly? <laughs> Freemasonish. <laughs> Of the free, I mean, it'll come to me. It'll come to me. <laughs> <laughs> and also, he does this little big long list of you know a lot of these people don't even know that they're part of the conspiracy, but Alan Greenspan does. <laughs> he was he's a very do you you he was very um but he's funny he's a funny yeah. guy. Yeah, he's an occult <laughs> power broker from New York. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Okay, so apparently the lizard aliens with all the money in the world they control everything. They really needed a Fed chair in the United States mm -hmm. to help them out by controlling the fake Ponzi scheme that doesn't do anything, according to everybody <laughs> yeah. who believes in this conspiracy. Right, in their story, yeah. And also, by, by some other guy once allegedly claimed to agree with David Icke right before dying so that nobody could check and see if he really did. Which, And that's pretty damn definitive. Yeah. <laughs> they also, he points out, this is so weird, he points out that they have reptilian high school students. And I just, I feel like that's his excuse for getting into a fist fight with a 14 year old that called him a loony. Right. <laughs> right. And losing, well, by right, the way. Yeah, he was like, yeah. oh, lizard karate. Yeah. He had lizard karate. <laughs> <laughs> Someone take my underwear off my head. <laughs> and then Davey asks us if we've ever really looked at all that spooky stuff going on on a dollar bill in a subchapter titled Satanic Money. This is where we learn that even if you're not born into the bloodline, Jews. you can appease the bloodline with gifts of gold. They really like gold. Jew gold. <laughs> Yeesh. I mean, he's not wrong. Patreon.com forward slash scathing atheist. Everybody, <laughs> I'm just saying. He's a, sometimes he gets us. Sometimes he gets us. It's a, <laughs> the hedge against inflation. <laughs> then he introduces the testimony of ranting idiot Renald Bernard who's been onto this satanic bloodline that controls banking for quite some time. Okay, so I looked up Ronald's YouTube, by the way, and he looks like Donald James Parker trying to play a younger version of himself in a Fast and the Furious movie. <laughs> it's fucking incredible. Yeah, so Bernard was all about being evil, but couldn't quite bring himself to sacrifice a baby to Satan. Yeah, <laughs> the story is such a bad lie. According to this guy, Bernard... He became the top ranked banker in the world, at which point the lizards were like, wow, you're a fucking amazing. But you're so good at banking. You should be part of our Jewish hologram conspiracy. And he was like, that's a weird sentence. I'm in. Yeah. But eventually they were like, dude, nice work. You're banking the fuck out of this. You got to eat this baby now. Yeah. And, yes. and then he had to give up that life. That's the story. It's, it's just so not dumb. worth it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Also, I have to point this out too. Every chapter, the name of the bad guy seems to get a little bit longer. So we're seven chapters in, and now they're the archontic reptilian gray demon serving the demiurge self aware distortion. <laughs> End real quote. <laughs> That's a tough bracelet to sell. Right. So, yeah, quick before it expands again, I guess we're going to close the book for now, but we'll have to open it up again for next month's installment of Everything You Need. To nope. I was so sure that was going to be like spelling out Zionism or right exactly yeah. <laughs> I was just checking all this did it so right. no, probably not <laughs> before we lower the port colors this week I want to remind you that tickets are already on sale for QED in Manchester England on October 29th and 30th Heath Eli and I are going to be there recording a live game episode they just announced a bunch of new speakers and it's always an amazingly well put together conference be sure to check the show notes for links to pick up your tickets anyway that's all the blast movie we've got for you tonight we'll be back in 10,022 minutes with more if you can't wait that long be on the lookout for a brand new episode of our sister show's hot friend god awful movies debuting at 7 Eastern on Tuesday and an even newer episode of our half sister show's citation day today debuting at noon Eastern on Wednesday obviously this episode wouldn't fit in the box right I might neglect to thank Heath Enright for always going above because he's tall Eli for always going beyond because he's weird and Lucinda for always going all in because she's just like that I need to thank Andrew Thomas and Marsh for flying across countries and or oceans to come hang out with us reminder if you're a patron look for a link in your email to hang out with us on Saturday night I also want to thank Mo for providing this week's alliterative Farnsworth quote but most of all of course I want to thank this week's most dashing diploids 
whose names I don't know yet because I'm recording this outro early, but I'll be sure to give them an over-the-top compliment by name next week. And if you'd like to join them and get in on that patron-only live stream thing, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash scathingatheist, whereby you own early access to an extended ad-free version of every episode, or you can make a one-time donation by clicking on the donate button on the right side of the homepage at scathingatheist.com. And if you'd like to help but money has wronged you in ways that you're not yet ready to forgive, you can also help a ton by leaving us a five-star review, telling a friend about the show, or following at PIATPod on Twitter. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Roberts handles our social media and our audio engineer is Martin Clark, who sold all the music that was used in this episode, which was used with permission. If you have questions, comments, or death threats, you'll find all the contact info on the contact page at scathingatheist.com. Okay, but what are we even going to put where the outtake normally goes then? The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2022. All rights reserved.